Welcome to Cat at Home. Today we are making a squash book with Miss Rachel. So I'm going to change my view here. Okay. And right now we're going to make a squash book. So this is what the outside of mine looks. I have it decorated kind of interestingly. And when you open it up, you get all of this. So I'm going to show you how to make it. I like this project because it looks really, really cool, but it's actually really, really easy. So I'm going to take some paper. I have more than three sheets here, but um, you can use three sheets to get started. That will give you three different pages. I use different colors so you can tell kind of where one ends and the other one begins. So I have this orange color up here. That's one sheet. This pink color in the middle is another sheet, and then the blue is another one. So um, you'll see when we get started, you can add as many pages as you want. It's totally up to you. Um, so we'll need paper and scissors and glue. You can use Elmer's glue if you want to. I'm going to use a glue stick because it's a little less messy. So the first thing is to take one sheet of paper, and I'll start with this blue. And we're just gonna make this paper square. So if you're like me and you have um, regular computer paper, eight and a half by 11, that's perfect. We're gonna square it off and I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna take one corner and fold it down so that this top edge starts to meet this side here. And once they're all lined up, and once my corner is kind of neat, I'm gonna press it down. So if you've ever made um, a fortune teller or a cootie catcher, it's kind of the first step to that. So you'll get, get a page that looks like this and you'll have this little rectangle at the bottom. And that rectangle we're going to cut off because once we open it, it will be a perfect square. So I will show you. I'm going to use this top edge here to guide me so that I can cut this off kind of straight. And I'm using scissors, but usually when I do this, I fold it and rip it. But I know a lot of people like to use scissors so you can get that really clean edge. So there we have our square sheet of paper. Pretty magical. Okay, so now I have the paper just set right in front of me. And I'm going to fold it up and in half so that I get a crease across the middle. And I'm going to use my nail to just kind of go over it and make it a really crisp fold. You can use um, the back of your scissors to do that, and that makes the fold really, really crisp. So it moves easily when you open and close the book. So then I'm going to open this back up, and I'm going to do one more fold, and that's the vertical way. I'm going to fold this over this way. Line up all of my edges. I want to take my time so that it's neat. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I'm sure you would like it to be neat. So let's take our time if you need to. I'm going to use the back of my scissors again to just kind of crease that edge so that it's super smooth and my book opens and closes pretty nicely. So now I have this piece of paper that has a fold across the middle this way, a fold across the middle this way, and a diagonal fold diagonal fold. So I need to do that two more times to make the rest of my papers to go into the book. So I'm going to do that a couple more times and you can do it with me if you miss the step. So the first step is to take the corner and bring it down over to the left side of the paper if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. Basically the opposite side of the paper. It's a really good way to lay it. Then we're going to cut off the bottom rectangle using that edge to guide us, the edge of the paper that we have here, to guide us so that we can cut it straight. And that's how we make our square sheet of paper. Now I'm going to fold it in half horizontally. There. 
You can use the back of my scissors or your nail to just really crease that down. I'm going to open it flat. Then I'm going to fold it vertically and crease it. Once I have my paper in place, use the scissors to crease that down. So now I have two pages and I will do another one in, let's do orange. So one more time. This time I'm doing the same thing, but I've just started at the bottom because it really doesn't matter what corner you use, just that you line up the edges and then crease it diagonally. There we go. Now we're going to cut this off. And I'm not throwing away these um, rectangles because I may use them to decorate my book, which is what I did with this one. I used the scraps and things to add some color. So, let's see. So I have all of my rectangles here. I'm going to finish folding up this page. And if you're working along with me, then you're about ready to get started gluing. And I'll show you how we're going to glue them together so that they're all one book. And then after we do that, I will give you a few decorating tips. But it's completely up to you how you want to decorate it. You don't have to use the tips I give you. I've seen these used as kind of like notebooks or um, scrapbooks with pictures of family and friends, that kind of thing. Or you can draw all over it. You can do a lot of cool things with this. So now I have my three sheets and I'm just setting them in front of me so that they're diamonds. And that diagonal line, the line that goes from corner to corner, is going is vertically in front of me. So it's going straight up and down in front of me. And the corners that don't have any diagonal folds are overlapping, which is what you want. And I think you can kind of see what's going on here. We have our overlapping papers just like that. And then you'll take the corners that are overlapping and you're going to glue them onto one another. So what I mean is you're going to take this blue one, which is my first page, and I'm going to put glue just on this square and then I'm going to glue it directly to this green one. So I will show you how that looks. So I'm going to take my blue, move these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to put glue all over the back of this one square. Okay. Set that to the side. Now I'm going to line up my square with the folds on the green paper and press it down. Okay. Press it down. And it doesn't matter which paper is on top, the book will still close and open no matter which one you put on top. So if you wanted the green paper to go on top, you could do that or you could just flip it over and have the green paper on top too. That's one thing I like about this. You can use both sides of the book. You can fill it up however you want. So we are going to put this orangish salmon color on top of, or I'm gonna put it under the green. So I'm gonna flip this. I'm gonna put my glue on the square that does not have a diagonal fold, the flat, Square. Fill it up with glue for my glue stick. There, set that to the side. And then line up the points with the, the corner of the page with the middle of the other one. So the green corner is lined up with the orange center. Then I'm lining up the edges of the page with the folds on the orange paper. So the edge of the green is lined up with the fold here. The edge of the green right here is lined up with the fold here. So I'm gonna smooth it out, rub it. Okay. Got some stuff there. Okay. 
So this is a little difficult to put into words, but I'm going to show you how to close this book up now. So we have all of this and it's not it's not pushing together the way that this one is, right? This one kind of unfolds and it's kind of like a, an accordion. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to take this first page and make sure we refold this diagonal fold back. So right now it will fold this way really nicely, but I'm going to turn over my whole book and fold it backwards. So it may take a little bit of doing. Just be patient with yourself. But if you fold it backwards, you can get that same fold and just crease it again with your fingernail or with the back of your scissors. There we go. We got that. And we're going to do the same thing with all of them. We're just going to fold our folds back and forth so that they're more flexible. So I'm going to do the same thing with the green. I'm going to take my paper and fold it back. So there we go. And remember, you want to crease it with your fingernail or the scissors. And then for the orange one, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. I'm just folding it. I'm gonna try to do it up here so you can see. Folding it. And I'm creasing it with my fingernail so that my folds get a little more flexible. So now I want to push these the blue paper. I'm gonna push it into it to itself and it collapses into a square. The green paper, I'm going to push backwards. There we go. So be patient and just kind of ease it into the fold. There we go. Got that one together. And then the orange one, I'm going to fold into itself and it closes up just like that. So now we have our accordion book, or I'm sorry, our squash book. It has a lot of different names, so excuse me. But we got it. So I'm gonna go over those last steps one more time because I know it's a little tricky. So I'm gonna lay this flat. And what you wanna do is fold this diagonal line backwards. You're gonna do that on the two outer ones. So I'm gonna fold the blue backwards. Fold the orange one backwards, and then I'm going to fold the green one forward, kind of like a regular book, like that. So, and you want to crease, make sure you really crease those papers so that they are flexible and they can move in and out the way that they need to. So once you pull it all apart, we're going to push these two corners in toward the middle of the green. We're going to put push these two orange corners in toward the middle of the green and they should collapse and become these squares. So if you're following along the second time, it will look like this. We're doing the same thing. I'm just showing you a different way to do it just in case the first way didn't make sense. And then I'm going to take these two and push them away from me. And the green should kind of fold on itself. If you get one that's kind of pointed out like mine is, you can just push it up with your finger. So it might take a little bit of doing. You can get someone to help you do this with a friend, a brother, a sister, parent or something to try to work out anything that's going wrong. But now you have a squash book. So the great thing about this is you can decorate it however you want. The example that I made for this lesson just collapse that. See, it keeps not folding the way it should. I'm just going to push it down. Set that off to the side. My decorated example, I've used stuff that is just in magazines and stuff like that. So this is one of those um, cards where you can subscribe to a magazine that falls out of all magazines. And then I cut out some words and things from magazines. This is an ad for a watch. This is just to show you what you can do. I um, wrote 
in it all over so it looks kind of crazy it has a bunch of tiny little words and then i even drew down here at the bottom one thing i think is really cool instead of thinking it of these um little areas as separate think of them as all one so your drawing could go from one area all the way to another one and really unify your design which will be cool another thing i did because i really like pop-ups is i folded um one of my scraps i just took one of these and folded it right in half i think i trimmed it down a little bit too to fit and then i glued it right in here like this and so now I have another card inside of my already pop up book, okay? So this is one example. If you have larger paper, um, you can make your book bigger. So this book is a square that is four and a quarter inches on each side. But if you have larger paper, you can get a larger book. So I had some um, of that really big 11 by 17 paper. And I did this one. So it's a lot bigger because the paper was bigger. So the size of your book is going to be determined by the size of the paper that you use. So and you see in this one I did, it's not so much collage work as it is drawings and things like that. So you can do... Kind of whatever you want with this. Once you have it all together, you can decorate it however you want and have a lot of fun. And remember that when you decorate one side, you've still got the other side to decorate. So you can really take your time, have some fun, collaborate with some people at home. I really like the idea of the sketchbook, not sketchbook, the scrapbook. You could put pictures in here, talk to your family members, get some stories, write those stories in there. This could be something really, really cool. And like I was saying earlier, you could even add more pages if you wanted to. So I have my three here. And if I was going to make another page, I'll just run through this really quickly. I could make my page the way I did before, folding the paper and creating my square. And then folding it in half, hamburger style and hot burger, hot dog style, hot burger, hot dog style. So, cut that off. So, I have one more sheet that I'm going to add. And like I said, you can add so many pages to this. It can get really, really crazy. So, we're going to make sure we crease it. And then, and you know what? You could even do that backwards crease when you're making your original pages. So the way that I creased my horizontal and my vertical or horizontal and vertical lines, I could go ahead and fold that um, diagonal one backwards and forwards a couple times. So that may make it easier when you're actually putting a book together. So fold it about three times okay. and then i could take this paper and just glue it right on here to add another page and i'll go ahead and do that so i can show you how it closes up i'm gonna add the glue to the square that i want to add my additional page to and you can the best way to add pages is on the squares that do not have the um, crease going through the middle diagonally. You want to add it on the flat squares, not the ones with the crease. So I'm adding it here. I'm lining up my corners, lining up my edges, or I'm trying to. Let's see, there we go. Okay, got that. And so now this already closes because we've worked with it before. And then you can decide which way you want this to close. I'm going to push mine toward the back. And kind of push that down. So now this one is like four pages instead of just three. So now you have a ton of space to decorate this book. Make it really cool. Make it really unique. 
Um, I said in the caption for the instructions, you could decorate this however you want. I have some magazine pages that I pulled out with flowers and things like that because I'm really liking that. I like the red here. I don't think I would use the whole picture, just like the red part of her dress. Add that in there. And when you're looking at magazine images, if you don't like the picture, maybe you like a part of it, you know? Maybe you just like the texture or the color. You can use that. You don't have to use the picture like the way it is because I wouldn't cut her out, but I might cut a square of her dress out. So that's one thing that I've noticed a lot of people like, oh, I don't like that picture. Well, you might like a little part of it and you can use that in your book. There's nothing saying you have to use the picture the way it is. So you can really stretch your materials if you look at things a little bit creatively, because I'm sure you have a bunch of stuff at home. Magazines, color pencils, crayons, markers, all of that. I even have some um, stickers that I could add if I wanted to. So now it's up to you to make it beautiful. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments. Um, let me know and I will try to get back to you and help you out. Um, and we would love, love, love to see your squash book finished in the comments. So once you get done, if you want to um, come back and add a picture to the comments, that would be great. Thank you. Have a great day. And remember to join Miss Van at 2 o'clock for Saltville Sculptures. Bye.